Good afternoon, and um, thank you for your patience. I, um, I have a laptop that's not the one I brought, and the day before I came here, the T key decided not to work. T's a, it, it's a letter you use a lot. So this presentation would have looked like this, and it would have gone downhill from here. So thank God for the tech people here. They're so super organized. I admit I'm a little bit intimidated by the fact that I'm the only thing standing between you and happy hour, but we will do our best. <laughs> so why are we here other than to give you something to do before happy hour starts? Um, we're here to help you guys create happier and probably more generous donors. We spend so much time, so much energy recruiting new donors, bringing new donors in, and then we kind of let them dribble out. And um, it costs you a lot of money when you bring in a donor and you can't keep them. Now, how we're gonna do this, you guys have all the creativity, you guys have the passion, you guys have the wisdom, you know your business. What I hope I can do is just get you to tap it in a deeper way in order to be effective donor stewards. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna tell you just a little about myself, um, talk about the problem, why are we talking about donor stewardship today, and then we're gonna talk about how, we, how do we fix it? What is it we can do, um, even if you're swamped and have no time to do anything new or to do anything else? Um, and then we'll take Q&A. So before we start, I just wanna get a sense of who's in the room. How many of you are paid staff for your shelter? Most of you. Um, how many of you are volunteers? <laughs> I'll, I'll figure out why that's true for both later. How many of you are board members? Wow. Um, how many of you feel like there's just aren't enough hours in the day to do what you're trying to do? <laughs> that's why I'm not giving you 10 to-do items um, in this presentation. I'm really giving you a way of thinking about donor stewardship that should make it much more natural and much more easy, and, and that can flow right into what you do already. Anyway, so here's me. Um, like you, I'm a lot of different things. I'm a husband, I'm a dad, pet parent, meditation instructor, fundraiser, you should be relieved to know. Um, shark diver, I've never met a shark I didn't want to pet, truth, um, and a lifelong animal nut. Now, not all of that is relevant, but the fact that I'm a pet parent, a Buddhist meditation instructor, surprisingly, and a fundraiser is relevant for, for this presentation. So as far as pet parent is concerned, I want to introduce Daffodil. Sue, are you in the room? Do you remember her? Daffodil is 15 years old. She came to us from the Washington Animal Rescue League. Any Washington Animal Rescue League people in the room? No, they're awesome. Um, about a month ago, my daughter was walking Daffodil. Daffodil got attacked pretty viciously by another dog, had to have some surgery. She's 15 years old. They didn't even know if she was gonna survive the anesthesia to put in the drain tubes. It's moments like that where you realize how important dogs are in, in the family. And we kind of look at her with new eyes. The good news is she's recovered completely. And it's like she knows she had a near-death experience. So she's like more puppy-like than we've seen her in ages which means she's scaring the, the mailman, but hey. <laughs> so anyway, um, <laughs> because, because my experience as a Buddhist practitioner and as a meditation instructor has served me very well as a fundraiser, this was the title I thought I would give this talk, A Buddhist Dog Lover's Guide to Donor Stewardship, but I was afraid it would chase you away. <laughs> and now you're here. All right. <laughs> So why are we having this conversation today? <laughs> We're having this conversation today because there is in almost every organization in the country a donor crisis. And I don't expect you to see these all that clearly, um, but if you go to bloomerang.com, it is a treasure trove of infographics. Um, the bottom line is this, in corporate America, the likelihood that a customer is gonna buy from you again is 94%. In nonprofits, the likelihood that a donor is gonna give again is 41%. 
Retention has been going down and down and down year after year. Right now, the odds that a new donor is gonna still be with you a year from now is one in four. 73% of them go away. Um, there have been studies that ask people, why did you, why did you stop giving? Why don't you give anymore? Um, the dark green ones, and again, this is a Bloomerang infographic, um, and I will make this available after. The dark green ones are ones that, that you could control. So 5% of the donors who stopped giving said, they don't need me. 8% said, we don't know where the money goes. 9% said, I don't even remember giving in the first place. 13% say they never got thanked. 18% say poor service or communication. If you add all those up, that's 53%. You can't, you can't do anything about the people who pass away. You can't do anything necessarily about the people who just start worrying about other things. But 53% of the donors who stopped giving, stopped giving because they weren't stewarded well. So what is the cause of this? The cause of this is, the, is, and it really does come down to this, too much asking. We're in this downward spiral where your email, your direct mail, your appeal, your year-end letter, whatever you're sending out, the chances are less is coming back each time. And because your boards and board members, I'm so glad you're in the room because you can be part of the solution, are pressuring you to raise more and more. You send more and more mail. You send more and more emails. You, you make more and more phone calls. And, and the problem is that crowds out stewardship. You're in emergency mode all the time. You're asking all the time. How many of you have given money to a political candidate? I don't care which, um, or a political cause. Um, do you get enough email from them? <laughs> they, th there was one organization who shall go nameless DCCC, that sent 24 emails in the last 24 hours of the quarter. And that's what we're up against. We're up against this tsunami of, of asking. We do a lot of interviews with donors, and donors often will say, I feel like an ATM with legs. Um, when a donor tells you they feel like an ATM with legs, it's a bad sign. It probably means they are joining the ranks of um, former donors. So what do we do to fix it? I'm gonna give you a simple answer. It's a simple answer, but it's not an easy answer. And you'll see what I mean in a second. Um, and what I want to do today is not give you 15 more things to do, because you don't have time to do 15 more things, but to help you get into the mindset of, of being a good donor steward and finding those opportunities throughout the day to inject sort of that mindset in, into what you do. So the answer, how do we fix it? is very simple, make donors happy. It's simple, but it's not necessarily easy. Um, and you, and you, what you need to do is you need to want to make donors happy, not because they'll give more money, but because it's the right thing to do. You'll probably raise a lot more money. You might raise a little less in the short run, but, but you've gotta really have as your goal making donors happy for, as an end in itself. So I'm gonna give you five steps towards making your donors happy. Um, and here's the first one. Set your intention. This may sound a little silly, but intentions always drive outcomes. Um, if you wanna truly make your donor happy, you need to actually start with the, with the mindset, I want my donors to be happy. In fact, let's all just say it together. I want my donors to be happy. You're on your way. Um, in Tibetan, the word for intention or motivation is kunlong, which literally translates into that which gives rise to all. Now, if you think this is some sort of nonprofit thing um, and corporate America would never go in this direction, you haven't read Tony Shea's book, Delivering Happiness, and I think Zappos is a donor, is a partner of, of best friends. Um, they found that companies with a higher sense of purpose outperform others by 400%. So this isn't some sort of touchy-feely nonprofit thing. This is, this is the real world. How many of you know who Yogi Berra is? Okay, ex anyone who doesn't explain, ask. Um, this is how Yogi Berra summed it up. If you don't know where you're going, you'll probably end up somewhere else. <laughs> don't think about that too hard. <laughs> it will hurt your head. 
This cat photo has nothing to do with the presentation, but most of the photos are of dogs, and I didn't want to give the cat people short shrift, so there you go. Okay, the first thing was setting your intention. You've done that. Congratulations. The second one, and this is the big one, is gratitude. That's why I said it three times. If setting your intention is the foundation of good donor stewardship, then gratitude is the primary strategy behind it. Um, if you nail this one, if you nail the gratitude piece, and I'll give you some concrete tips about it, you're more than halfway home as donor stewards, and quite frankly, you're way ahead of the pack because so few people are doing this right. So gratitude's not an idea, it's not a concept, it's actually more of a state of being. And I want to try something today, um, and I want to ask you to pair off, and then I'll tell you what to do. And we're going to try a short exercise. All right, who's not paired off? Um, do you want to join these people as a trio? Excellent. Okay, you are going to take turns as the asker and the answerer. This is not going to be a conversation. For two minutes, the asker, the asker is going to ask, in your life, what are you grateful for? And the answerer is going to answer. And it could be anything, it could be work-related, it could be pet-related, it could be, I like it that it's not cold outside. And then the asker is just gonna ask, what else? What else are you grateful for? Not a conversation. And then after two minutes, we'll switch, and the asker becomes the answerer, and the answerer becomes the asker. Respondent might be a better word. Does everyone get the exercise? All right, um, let's start. Thank you, thank you. The reason we do that is because if you're gonna express sincere gratitude, you have to be coming from a place of sincere gratitude. Interestingly enough, there are scientists, neuroscientists and whatnot, who are claiming that practices like this will make you happier, will make your spouses happier, and might even lengthen your life, but it will definitely make you a better steward. I wanna to call to your attention um, something that's coming up in August, I have nothing to do with it. I get no kickbacks. It's run by two brilliant trainers, Beth Ann Locke and Shannon Doolittle, and it's called Gratitude Camp. And it's a, it's a two-week program of donor stewardship training. Um, and it's pretty amazing. I did it in June. Their last one of the years starts August 8th. I think it's 150 bucks. But they're also doing a free webinar if that's too rich for your blood. So if you go to thegratitudecamp.com, um, I cannot recommend it highly enough. Now, in case you don't make it to Gratitude Camp, I'm going to give you the bottom line. And the bottom line is this. A thank you should be timely. And timely meaning when someone gives you money, particularly if they give you money that's like $100 or more, you should be back to them within 48 hours. Um, it should be personal. If they gave you money for dogs, mention dogs in the thank you. If they gave you money for ferrets, mention ferrets. It should be conversational. Here's the line that we all start with that is wrong. On behalf of the XYZ Animal Shelter, no. It's a personal note of thanks. It should be passionate. I have a feeling that's not a challenge for this room. And this is Shannon and Beth Ann's word. It should be delightful. It should have some zip to it. Um, but the timely, I'm gonna circle back around, is really important. There was a study done in the UK that showed a first time donor gets a thank you within 48 hours is four times more likely to make a second gift. So here's, here's where you can make a lot of progress very quickly without adding 100 things to your to-do list. Get a thank you to the donor within 48 hours. Um, a couple quotes that I, that I love. I would maintain that thanks are the highest form of thought and that gratitude is happiness doubled by wonder. What an amazing statement. 
Then Lionel Hampton said, gratitude is when memory is stored in the heart and not just in the mind. You are fundraisers, you are in the emotions business. You are not in the Spock rational thought business. That is true even if you were raising money for something other than animal rescue, but for animal rescue it's true times five. Three, practice the art of listening. Um, this is something that we often just instinctively do wrong in a communication setting. We're constantly looking for the right words or the right thing to say or the right list of accomplishments or whatever. Donors really appreciate it when you ask them, what do you think? What do you like? What do you love? Why do you care? Why did you give us the money? Um, all of those are important information for you in keeping up a meaningful conversation with them. And when I say listening, I don't mean waiting for your turn to talk, which is what we usually do. This is harder than it sounds. Um, often we'll do focus groups with donors. <laughs> I would love to have dogs in my focus groups. Often we'll interview donors. Sometimes we'll do surveys with donors. Um, there's a free version of SurveyMonkey, which is good if you have a lot of donors, you might have to pay for it or, or come up with something else. But, but build asking donors' opinions into your communications calendar and take the listening part as seriously as you take the talking part. Four, use appropriate technology. Um, airplanes are not appropriate technology. How many of you um, have gotten pressure from above, board members, directors, whatever, Everyone's doing Pinterest, we have to do a Pinterest, or we have to raise money by Twitter, or um, did you see the ice bucket challenge? You all know about the ice bucket challenge, right? Why can't we do an ice bucket challenge? Um, here's the problem with that approach. The more technology you add, the more people you exclude. When you wanna connect with every donor, you wanna use the lowest technology necessary to get the job done. If, as soon as you get into social media, as soon as you get into to sort of edgy stuff, you're knocking out a huge part of your audience. And typical donors are in their 50s, 60s, 70s, and sometimes 80s. They're not the 19-year-olds. They're not the 15-year-olds who are playing Pokemon Go. I know that's working for you guys in some ways, but probably not in fundraising. So I'm gonna share with you my two favorite fundraising technologies that are absolutely foolproof. Ready? The first one's a pen. <laughs> Handwritten notes are so powerful and so important that if you do go to gratitude camp, you'll do an entire unit on handwritten notes. And here's just one example. We have one client of all of our clients who are writing thank you notes to every single donor. They get notes like this back. Over the years, I've given donations to various causes, but this is the first time ever that I have gotten an actual personal note from someone at the cause. Folks, the bar's really low. You are going to shine <laughs> by sending a handwritten note. Lori Hudson at Planned Parenthood takes it a step further. She tucks her business card in with the note, and you know what that says? It says, I'm accountable to you. I'm here if you want to talk to me. I asked her if she swamped with phone calls. They've got thousands of, of donors that, that Lori's responsible for. She gets about two calls a week, and she feels like it's a price worth paying. So Penn, my favorite technology. What's my second favorite? Telephone. Telephone. Very good. Um, I know, because I talked to Sue yesterday, that Best Friends has, has, do you have a calling program or you're talking about it? Now I can't remember. Yeah. You have one. Um, organizations, if you can't write that note, second best is the call. And, and it's not a complicated call. It's, hi, thank you again for your gift. I just want you to know it's making a difference for the dogs and cats in our care um, and let you know how much of a difference it makes. You can take it from there, but that's all you need to say. You can get volunteers to do it, board members. Um, you should be helping with fundraising anyway. Thank you calls are an easy tiptoe into the world of, um, of fundraising. 
For you fish people, and I am definitely a fish person, here's a gratuitous fish photo that has nothing to do with the presentation. That is a 200 pound Nassau grouper in Little Cayman. Um, they come up to you to be petted. And when you kind of run your hand over their dorsal they lean up against you and make this thrumming noise that I swear sounds like purring. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. All right, number five, don't be a stranger. Um, you do need to communicate out. You not only need to listen, you need to communicate out, but there's not that many things you need to say. Every donor wants to know that they're appreciated. Every donor wants to know that their, their donation has made a difference. And almost every donor wants to know that their gift was well spent. Um, one opportunity to convey all of that at once is to celebrate victories large and small. And here's what I mean by that. Sue and I were talking yesterday about the fact that every dog or cat or other animal that's adopted out is a victory, right? And that's, that's a cool moment. I remember when, whoa, I remember when Daffodil came. Um, I remember how scared my daughter was. Um, now she's not scared. Um, but it was, it was sort of a very powerful emotional moment. Capture those, videotape those, write about those. Um, how many of you do that already? Quite a few of you. The rest of you, catch up. Um, I made a donation, not a huge donation, I think it was $250, to International Bird Rescue. They invited me to come tour the facility, and then I got to go with a, with a rehab person down to the water's edge with a pelican that was ready to be re-released and release it back into the wild. That was incredible. I, and so looking for those, those heart-grabbing moments and trying to convey those is, is really important opportunity to make your donors feel like they're part of something really special. Okay, your bonus, I told you there were five um, steps towards making your donors happy. Here's the sixth one. Do not panic. Um, I told you I wasn't gonna give you 10 things for your to-do list, but I am gonna give you one, and I think you can guess what the one is. Also, on our website, we didn't really talk tactics today, and we can talk tactics during the Q&A. On our website are some free white papers. This one called The Missing Middle. It was written about mid-level donors, which are donors who give between 500 and, and a couple thousand dollars a year. But it's really true of any committed donor. It's true of anyone who really cares about your cause. Um, and you'd be surprised how many $15 donors end up being major, major donors over time. We put out a second paper specifically on stewardship, how to treat mid-level donors like major donors without breaking the bank. Um, please download it. We don't even ask for your email address. We just want you to use it, be inspired by it, share your best ideas with one another. And um, I'm not gonna parry you off again because I know what's gonna happen. So here's what I'm gonna ask you to do. Take a moment and think about what's the one thing you could do when you get back to the office that would be a step towards making your donors happy. You don't even need to say it, just, just think about it. And promise yourself to do that one thing. Could be signing up for gratitude camp. Could be buying a pen and a stack of note cards, hint, hint. It could be asking volunteers we're asking a volunteer to make thank you calls. Just one thing, one thing that's a step towards making your donors happier. Got it? Okay, so um, I wanna thank you for your attention and I wanna spend the rest of our time answering any questions you might have.